Thank you for coming today. It's my big pleasure to, to be here and thank you for this pretty introduction. Thank you, Mark. And first of all, thank you for the University of Texas for the possibility to give uh, this lecture today to a still so important topic, judicial protection of fundamental rights. Uh, this problem is crucial for everyone for individuals all over the world, as well as still sensitive in the public discourse. The problem of judicial protection of fundamental rights, it's so broad that I could talk about it not even several hours today, but uh, several days. And I would not finish, I think. Due to this fact, I have chosen uh, one substantial area of of judicial protection with regard to the unborn life. In this field I'm going to talk about the case law especially of the European Court of Human Rights and then moreover I want to present you most important uh, issues of judicial protection of fundamental rights in Poland and finally I will do several regards to the US in the historical rather perspective uh, swiftly uh, so invite you I invite you to, to listen to so from the beginning in Europe the Convention for the protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms is the supranational Bill of Rights for European countries the term this term clearly illustrates the essence and the significance of this set of human rights, the rank of which has a constitutional character. Over the years, European Court of Human Rights created an understanding of human rights that goes far beyond the original known to national constitutional orders catalog of human rights. These rights are inherent in the nature and dignity of every human being. Importantly, their existence does not depend on the will of the constitutional makers of European countries. Some of the rights are uh, enshrined in the European Convention of Human Rights or absolute, first of all, uh, right uh, to, uh, to life, enshrined in Article 2 of the Convention. Then the prohibition uh, of torture from Article 3 of the Convention. Or the prohibition of slavery and forced labor. It means that they can, under no circumstances, be restricted or reduced. Everyone's right to life is an absolute right. Pursuant to Article 2 of the Convention, everyone's right to life shall be protected by law. No one shall be deprived of his life intentionally. So in this context, what's about the uh, abortion in the context of Article 2 of the Convention? We should start by pointing out that the word abortion comes from the Latin word aboriri uh, that means in English to miscarry ab means away and oriri be born it should be noted that the English word to abort means also to fail which is more pejorative explanation of the word we can formulate several aspects that are presented in the case law of the European Court of Human Rights. The first relates generally to the access to abortion. The second relates to the access to the effective mechanism capable of determining whether the conditions for obtaining a legal abortion has been met. Or the third relates to the right of life, uh, the right of the father of the child to object to the spouse's decision to abort. But the fundamental question to be answered is 
whether the so-called fetus is a human being? This question was unfortunately not resolved by the European Court of Human Rights, for example, in the most famous case of the Vaux versus France from 2004. The case involved Dino Vaux, a 36 year old of Vietnamese origin, who lost her baby in 1991 after a patient mix up in which hospital staff in the city of Lyon confused her with another woman who was to have an intrauterine contraceptive device removed. The erroneous surgery led to the rupture of the water sac protecting the famous female uh, fetus, forcing the doctor to order an emergency abortion. After taking the hospital to court on manslaughter charges and losing in France, the Vos lawyer lodged the case to the, at the European uh, Court of Human Rights, arguing that the fetus was entitled to protection of under the European Convention of Human Rights. It was noted that this 21-week-old uh, fetus was viable. In this ruling, decided by 14 judges to three, European Court stated that even as assuming that Article 2 of the Convention was applicable in this case, what was for the court not obvious, there has been no violation of this provision of the Convention. The court found that it's neither desirable nor even possible to answer in the abstract the question whether the unborn child is a person for the purposes of Article 2 of the Convention. In the opinion to the judgment, court stated that the issue of when the right to life begins comes within the margin of appreciation of every member state of the Convention. From the European Court point of view, the reasons for that conclusion are, first of all, that the issue of such protection has not been resolved with the majority of the European countries, in France in particular, where it is the subject of debate, and secondly, that there is no European consensus on the scientific and legal definition of the beginning of life. By indicating that uh, European Court found a conceived but unborn child is merely a human race. Therefore, the Court did not recognize the child's right to life. Consequently, European Court of Human Rights didn't acknowledge the positive obligation of, to protect unborn children against intentional or even unintentional homicide without providing for a criminal sanction for this act. As is the case, of course, of the homicide of every other person. Judge Georg Ress from, German, from Germany delivered the dissenting opinion to this uh, decision and he stated that life, which is one of the values, if not the main value of the protected by the Convention, will in principle require the protection of the criminal law. And moreover, I agree with the judge Ress that the embryo and the mother are two separate human beings and they need separate protection. It should be obvious that historically lawyers have understood first of all the notion of everyone.
friend, Temeshwav Ostoisky, who comes from uh, Warsaw, where he is a public prosecutor in the Polish Attorney General's office and also a professor in the new Academy of Justice, also in Warsaw. He's originally from Poznan, and he's been in the United States for uh, closing in on four weeks here, two weeks up in Washington, D.C. area, uh, hosted at George Mason University, and then we've hosted him here at the University of Texas for almost two weeks now, and uh, departs for home later this week. And uh, um, Amy and I had a chance to go to Warsaw back in October, where he hosted us. Jay was on Zoom, Helen Alvarez was on Zoom, uh, where he hosted a conference uh, on marriage and family law, which was uh, a delight to be a part of. So we're grateful for you for that, and we're happy to have hosted you here. And so I'm going to cede the floor to Shemar Schwab, and he'll talk for roughly 30 to 40 minutes on uh, human, uh, uh, I should, should say, religious freedom, and insofar as, it, especially as it relates to uh, abortion and uh, abortion rights in Poland. So, without further ado, Shemar Schwab Ostoiski, Thank you. Yours. Welcome. Thank Glad you, Mark, you. for the introduction. <clears throat> thank you for coming today. It's my big pleasure to, to be here, and thank you for this pretty introduction. Thank you, Mark. And first of all, thank you for the University of Texas for the possibility to give uh, this lecture today to a still so important topic, judicial protection of fundamental rights. Uh, this problem is crucial for everyone, for individuals all over the world, as well as still sensitive in the public discourse. The problem of judicial protection of fundamental rights, it's so broad that I could talk about it not even several hours today, but uh, several days, and I would not finish, I think. Due to this fact, I have chosen uh, one substantial area of, of judicial protection with regard to the unborn life. In this field, I'm going to talk about the case law, especially of the European Court of Human Rights, and then, moreover, I want to present you most important uh, issues of judicial protection of fundamental rights in Poland. And finally, I will do several regards to the US in the historical rather perspective uh, swiftly. Uh, so invite you, I invite you to, to listen to. So from the beginning, in Europe, the convention for the protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms is the supranational Bill of Rights for European countries. The term, this term clearly illustrates the essence and the significance of this set of human rights, the rank of which has a constitutional character. Over the years, European Court of Human Rights created an understanding of human rights that goes far beyond the original known to national constitutional orders catalog of human rights. These rights are inherent in the nature and dignity of every human being. Importantly, their existence does not depend on the will of the constitutional makers of European countries. Some of the rights are uh, enshrined in the European Convention of Human Rights are absolute. First of all, uh, right to, uh, to life, enshrined in Article 2 of the Convention. Then the prohibition uh, of torture from Article 3 of the Convention, or the prohibition of slavery and forced labor. It means that they can, under no circumstances, be restricted or reduced. Everyone's right to life is an absolute right. Pursuant to Article 2 of the Convention, 
everyone's right to life shall be protected by law. No one shall be deprived of his life intentionally. So in this context, what's about the uh, abortion in the context of Article 2 of the Convention? We should start by pointing out that the word abortion comes from the Latin word aboriri, uh, that means in English to miscarry. Ab means away and oriri be born. It should be noted that the English word to abort means also to fail, which is more pejorative explanation of the word. We can formulate several aspects that are presented in the case law of the European Court of Human Rights. The first relates generally to the access to abortion. The second relates to the access to the effective mechanism capable of determining whether the conditions for obtaining a legal abortion has been met. Or the third relates to the right of life, uh, the right of the father of the child to object to the spouse's decision to abort. But the fundamental question to be answered is whether the so-called fetus is a human being. This question was unfortunately not resolved by the European Court of Human Rights, for example in the most famous case of the Vaux versus France from 2004. The case involved Dai No Vo, a 36-year-old of Vietnamese origin, who lost her baby in 1991 after a patient mix-up in which hospital staff in the city of Lyon confused her with another woman who was to have an intrauterine contraceptive device removed. The erroneous surgery led to the rupture of the water sac protecting the famous female uh, fetus, forcing the doctor to order an emergency abortion. After taking the hospital to court on manslaughter charges and losing in France, the Vos lawyer lodged the case to the, at the European uh, Court of Human Rights, arguing that the Fidesz was entitled to protection of, under the European Convention of Human Rights. It was noted that this 21-week-old uh, Fidesz was viable. In this ruling, decided by 14 judges to three, European courts stated that even as, assuming that Article 2 of the Convention was applicable in this case, what was for the court not obvious, there has been no violation of this provision of the Convention. The court found that it's neither desirable nor even possible to answer in the abstract the question whether the unborn child is a person for the purposes of Article 2 of the Convention. In the opinion to the judgment court stated that the issue of when the right to life begins comes within the margin of appreciation of every member state of the Convention. From the European Court point of view, the reasons for that conclusion are first of all that the issue of such protection has not been resolved with the majority of the European countries, in France in particular, where it is the subject of debate. And secondly, that there is no European consensus on the scientific and legal definition of the beginning of life. By indicating that uh, European Court found a conceived but unborn child is merely a human race. Therefore, the court did not recognize the child's right to life. 
Consequently, European Court of Human Rights didn't acknowledge the positive obligation of to protect unborn children against intentional or even unintentional homicide without providing for a criminal sanction for this act. As is the case, of course, of the homicide of every other person. Judge Georg Ress from, German, from Germany delivered the dissenting opinion to this uh, decision and he stated that life, which is one of the values, if not the main value of the protected by the convention, will in principle require the protection of the criminal law. And moreover, I agree with the judge Res that the embryo and the mother are two separate human beings and they need separate protection. It should be obvious that historically lawyers have understood first of all the notion of everyone. The Family Planning Act of 1993 permitted abortion in three circumstances. First of all, when the pregnancy posed a threat to the life or health of the pregnant woman. Secondly, the most important, when prenatal examinations indicated that there was a high probability of the severe and irreversible fetal defects. And third, when there was a reasonable suspicion, suspicion that the pregnancy was the result of a sexual assault. A step toward liberalization was taken again in 1996, when an amendment to the uh, mentioned uh, planning law allowed abortion cases where a pregnant woman was uh, exercising a, a difficult li uh, living conditions. This amendment, however, what is important, was annulled in 1997 uh, for the first time by the Constitutional Court. In 2015, the Constitutional Court delivered the second decision was uh, important in the context of abortion. In this decision, pronounced that a medical practitioner invoking conscientious objection to refuse the perform abortion should not be under a duty to refer the woman to another doctor or healthcare institution. And the most important, the third decision of the Polish Constitutional Court was handed down in October 2020. The Constitutional Court removed fetal defects as the grounds for abortion. It should be emphasized that an estimated 93% of abortion were previously performed on these grounds, fetal defects. The Constitutional Tribunal stated that the family planning law was uh, inconsistent with several provisions of Polish Constitution. First of all, with Article 38, uh, which lays down to the legal protection of life of every human being, and Article 30 of the Polish Constitution, that inherent and dignity of human beings are in Poland the source of human and civil freedom and rights. They are inviolable and its respect and protection is the responsibility of public authorities. These provisions have to be interpreted in connection with the principle of proportionality. What is crucial? Uh, according to this provision, uh, that means Article 31, Section 3 of Polish Constitution, Restriction on the exercise of constitutional freedoms and rights may be established only by statute and only if they are necessary in a democratic state. 
limitation of these rights may not violate the, the essence of freedoms and rights. In other words, the Polish Constitutional Court stated that the abortion in Poland, based on the so-called fetal defects, violated the essence of the constitutional rights and freedoms referred to above to the right of life and human dignity. This premise of abortion was abused by doctors in Poland in the past and consequently was the essential form of eugenics in Poland, cons consisting in the elimination of people they are weak, sick or having birth defects. Such an approach known from human history certainly didn't pass the aforementioned test of proportionality. Currently in Poland, termination of pregnancy may only be performed of the twi, twi, uh, excuse me, of the two uh, premises. First of all, the pregnancy when pregnancy poses a threat to the life or health of a pregnant woman, and secondly, when is the justified suspicion that the pregnancy resulted from the sexual assault. This test of proportionality is crucial also for the United States. For the above mentioned reasons, the approach presented by the judges on the basis of the US law in the case Roe versus Wade does not pass neither the substantial due process test or equal protection test. As you know, after nearly 50 years of accepting abortion in the United States, this, this problem has once again become a topic of the lively debate with regards to abortion laws, for example, in Texas or the Mississippi. We should not forget that uh, this problem has the uh, deep historical context. Uh, before adoption of the US Constitution, unborn human lives have been legally protected, first under the common law and later in the codes. And by the time of the ratification of the 14th Amendment and the years shortly after, every state passed a law protecting unborn human lives from abortion and most from conception. Furthermore, these laws were primarily motivated by a desire to protect unborn life and not because of abortion dangers for women. There is a long-standing history in this country of laws directed against abortion. The current debate on the so-called right to abortion in, in the constitutional dimension is essentially about the answer to the question of whether we will honor or abandon our civilizational commitment to the equal worth and dignity of all human beings, even the smallest, youngest, weakest, and most vulnerable. And finally, let me share with you my example and that of my parents. I would like to tell you that it really pays off to have children, even many children. If my mother agreed to abort me, which she had the opportunity to do, and what she was persuaded to do in the so-called PRL times, I would not be standing before you in front of you today and talking about what I am saying. I wouldn't have this wonderful life that I have. I wouldn't have the most beautiful and wonderful wife today. 
I also wouldn't have five great children. I wouldn't also have the opportunity to do my well, useful work. I couldn't meet so many great people. After all, I would not be able to breathe the same air as you, absorb the rays of the sun, learn, teach other people, travel the world. I'm sure life is the most perfect gift from the very conception in our mother's womb. Let live yourself and let others live. Don't be afraid to be a hero of this world, having children or helping others to have children. Thank you very much for your attention.